Antarctica is the most remote and isolated continent on Earth. Dead to be fully explored by humans, it is home to glaciers, mountains, vegetation, and penguins. However, what is striking about Antarctica today is what the continent lacks. Presently, there are no native trees or any native mammals, reptiles, or amphibians. But Antarctica wasn't always like this, thanks to plate tectonics. Antarctica was once connected to other continents at various times in the past, about 56 million years ago. Antarctica was still attached to Australia and South America. Fossil records tell us that in the early Eocene, Antarctica was a warm, densely forested place. Vastly different from the cold continent we know today, palm trees thrived there, as did flowering plants and beetles. Even some marsupials and hoved mammals inhabited this lush landscape. And top tau, insulation likely played a significant role as a migration path for the ancestors of some of the most distinctive mammals in the southern hemisphere, such as wallabies and kangaroos. Eventually, the ice known as warming variant in Antarctica transformed into the icy, Kanye Everglad isolated from the rest of the world by the planet's strongest ocean currents. However, much of what we recognize about the Southern Hemisphere, including its unique wildlife in Australia, likely originated from a time when Antarctica was green. If you got time travel to Eocene in Antarctica, the first thing you would notice might be the greenery off the coast of West Antarctica. Scientists have discovered fossilized pollen and spores from palm trees in ancient ferns. These warm weather plants tell us a lot about what early Eocene Antarctica was like. The coast of West Antarctica experienced very mild winters, with little or no frost. Average annual temperatures in the region were about 60, with winter averages around 11 inch. How could ancient Antarctica be so warm? The Eocene was not the first time the tantalized climate was temperate. Scientists have found spores or other fossils from war other plants in Antarctica dating back to the Devonian period, over 358 million years ago, and the early Jurassic period, about 190 million years ago, when Antarctica was home to temperate dinosaurs like the long-necked Galisaurus and a carnivorous Rheophrosaurus. Around 100 million years ago, most of the land that would become Antarctica migrated to the bottom of the world, in the early Eocene. The western part of Antarctica had just separated from South America, but the eastern part was still mainly connected to Australia. During this period, the world was experiencing an extreme warming event, known as the Paleo-Neto Maximum. During this time, global average temperatures rose by 58 degrees, then degrading less than 220.0 years. As the world's climate changed, its flora and fauna did too. Tropical plants like palms and ferns could spread to all continents, including Antarctica. Antarctica is vast, so it could support various ecosystems during the Eocene. Further inland and at higher altitudes, spores and leaf traces from plants typically found in temperate rainforests, like oaks, have been discovered. Scientists also believe that some areas even experienced heavy seasonal rain receiving more than 60 inches of rainfall annually during the summer. And, of course, the plants were not alone. On Seymour Island off the Antarctic Peninsula, paleontologists have recovered ancient dung balls from beetles. If these beetles were rolling these dung balls around, then where did the dung come from? Some of it came from ancient marsupials. The remains on isolated teeth tell us that some of these small mammals lived in western Antarctica, based on their teeth. Some of them belonged to the same family as the modern Monalolo possum, the small insectivorous marsupial from South America. Another marsupial from Antarctica, Antarctodon, was first described in 1984. This opossum-like creature was the first terrestrial mammal discovered in the Antarctic fossil record. Its ancestors likely came from South America. Other Antarctic Eocene residents probably also came from South America. For example, a controversial toe bone suggests that Xenophrens, a group of mammals including modern-day sloths, might have lived in Antarctica. Xenophrens originally evolved in South America, as did the ancestors of a type of hoofed abifor, found in Western Antarctica, called Carthos. The teeth of this creature tell us it was a browser that stripped branches and occasionally young trees. Few specimens have been found. 
but researchers say there were at least two species in Antarctica, based on the size of their teeth. One of the host herbivores was larger, weighing up to 230, while a smaller relative was about a quarter of the size. Another large hoofed mammal known from early Eocene sediments in western Antarctica is Antardon. Scientists believe it was an astropover, or group of extinct herbivores mainly found in South America. The only known fossil of Antardon so far is its teeth. But more complete skeletons of other astropovers suggest these animals resemble tackle like creatures. Some had self sharpening canine teeth and ate a mix of soft plants and hard seeds while others might have been semi equitim but modern hippos. Paleontologists think that Antarctica is another species whose ancestors arrived in Antarctica from South America. Therefore, these animals and others that shared their prehistoric habitat were incredibly important to paleontologists. The fossil record in Antarctica is not as complete as all other continents, and any bones found there isolated and fragmented, however, the coexistence of all these Eocene organisms tells us that Antarctica was once a habitat for a variety of terrestrial mammals. But what changed? What happened to the green Antarctica, bustling with terrestrial now life, while land mammals in Antarctica were thriving? Some significant changes were looming on the horizon. Scientists are still piecing together the timeline. But they believe that around 56 million years ago, Antarctica and South America separated. Then, about 40 million years ago, Antarctica and Australia were separated by a newly emerging sea route. The large body of water that still exists today, sometimes called the Tasmanian Gateway. At some point, another sea route formed, the Drake Passage, off the Antarctic Peninsula. Between 36 and 23 million years ago, over time, Antarctica when the land bridge between South America and Australia became an isolated continent. The stage was set for a new dominant force in the Southern Ocean, the Antarctic Neoncola Current. This current swirls around Antarctic air and is the strongest ocean current on Earth, carrying more volume than 1.0 Amazon rivers and flowing at dizzying speeds of up to 40 ding per second in some pieces driven by winds and unimpeded by land. This circular current isolates warmer waters further north from the continent. It also brings cold water from the ocean steps to the surface. These factors combine to create a cooling effect on Antarctica. Climatologists estimate that the Antarctic Yang Marnpole current is between 41 and 23 million years old. But there is little consensus on how its formation impacted the cooling of increase of ice in ancient Antarctica. What we do know is that the late Eocene or lowly Oligocene were periods of global cooling, especially at high latitudes in both hemispheres. Temperatures dropped by about 15 degrees, nintadigably, and atmospheric carbon dioxide levels were decreasing, possibly. After a large amount of this carbon dioxide was absorbed by marine phytoplankton or buried in sediments at the ocean's bottom, this may have contributed to the global cooling trend. As glaciers became more widespread across the continent, many plant populations suffered. A study of fossil plant samples from the Cross Valley Formation on the Antarctic Peninsula shows a 47% reduction in plant diversity between the late Paleocene and Mediod Hanks. Gradually, the lovelitting frames were replaced by timber forests dominated by southern beech trees, known to have lived on the continent from the late Cretaceous, based on leaf traces and fossilized spores. Their spore shapes tell scientists that southern beech trees were present in Antarctica about 2.5 million years ago. But today, is it treeless? Whole desert where the remaining vegetation consists mainly of mosses, grasses, lichens, and algae. The biodiversity in Antarctica was significantly impacted post times. However, life continued to flourish on its two former neighbors. After splitting from Antarctica, South America and Australia were completely isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years. And both continents share a unique feature, marsupials. The New World marsupials originated in South America before some of them migrated north to Central and North America. 
like Nino, Australia is famous for its captivating marsupials, including kangaroos, wallabies, and the Norwegstina feline. Evidence suggests that the common ancestor of today's marsupials lived in South America about 70 to 80 million years ago. From there, marsupials spread throughout Antarctica and into Australia when the three continents were still connected. As proof of this journey, they left behind remnants of marsupials like Antarctodon, a relative of the marsupials but Australia is famous for today. So, while Antarctica has lost its large terrestrial animals, it once served as a pathway to life in the forests. This is why even today, our world still retains ecological traces of the time when Antarctica was green and thriving. The green Antarctica might also have been a favorable place for prehistoric civilizations to develop. However, today, searching for traces of such civilizations is challenging due to the thick ice sheet covering over Wong Kong and enveloping 98% of the Antarctic surface. Imagine how ancient humans might have lived with vegetation and forests covering Antarctica, now turned into fossils buried under ice. There have been legends and rumors about a southern continent, Terra Australis, in ancient times. Notable figures like the Greek philosopher Legostolto, and the Greek geographer, and Rathagrapha Marinus of Tyre wrote about the Antarctic climate. It included the concept of a southern landmass in their works. The idea of Terra Australis, a vast continent in the southern part of the planet balancing the land masses in the northern hemisphere, dates back to ancient times, however, but remained largely speculative until much later explorations. Interestingly, a group of Russian, American, and other explorers who ventured into Antarctica discovered structures resembling pyramids with their chips emerging from melting ice, sparking numerous questions. If Antarctica once had a war, climate, it's conceivable that ancient humans could have lived there, if there was an ancient civilization in Antarctica. Any structures they built will be buried under the ice. The mysterious structures from ancient Antarctica, whether they are buried pyramids or not continue to intrigue us. Discovering pyramids in Antarctica would undoubtedly be surprising and potentially change our understanding of history. Our knowledge of ancient history is still limited and it's possible that humans have inhabited Earth longer than we currently believe. We still don't know how an ancient Antarctic civilization might have developed, or why the Antarctic climate changed to become so cold to excavate any buried structures. A significant amount of ice would need to melt. Melting this ice would raise sea levels, presenting a terrifying prospect for many coastal regions around the world. This is a major obstacle to preventing deeper exploration in Antarctica. In conclusion, the history of Antarctica is a tale of dramatic climatic shifts, from a warm, green, and thriving continent to the frozen, isolated landmass we know today. Its past is a critical piece of our planet's ecological and geological history, providing insights into the ancient movements of continents and the evolution of life on Earth. The story of Tanta, Diana's transformation offers a glimpse into the Earth's past and raises intriguing questions about the unknown chapters of human history, and the mysteries that remain hidden beneath its vast ice sheets.